Let's see how we can actually differentiate the inverse secant function. And once again, I will do this from scratch. Suppose I don't know about the inverse secant derivative. What I will do is, I will just say, okay, let y equal to inverse secant x. Why? Because this way, I can apply the original secant on both sides. So I can say, this is the same as secant y, and that's equal to just x. You apply the original secant on both sides. From here, we will just differentiate this with respect to x. And keep in mind, y is a function of x, okay? Now, the derivative of secant y is going to be secant y tangent y. But once again, because y is a function of x, we will have to multiply by dy dx. And this is the implicit differentiation, okay, by the chain rule right here as well. Anyway, the derivative of x with respect to x is just equal to 1. So this is nicely equal to 1. Now, we can divide this on both sides. So we get dy dx equal to 1 over secant y times tangent y. This is not bad at all, but if you look at the original expression, it was in terms of x. Our answer should also be in terms of x, okay? Now, if you look at this, secant y is exactly x, so that's nice. But what's tangent y in terms of x though? Well, let's look at this one more time. When we have secant y, okay, and that's equal to x, I will write this down as x over y. And then I can draw a right triangle. This right here is our angle y. And I'll put this down in black. And then remember the definition of secant in the right triangle is the hypotenuse, which is the x, over the adjacent, which is 1 right here. And now our goal is to figure out the other side. This is not bad at all because we can just do the square root and then you do the hypotenuse square, which is x square, and then minus the other side square. One square is still one, so that's it. Now, by looking at this triangle, by the way, still have one over, secant y is of course still x over one, so we have x. And for tangent y, y is right here, tangent is the opposite over adjacent, so we have that. So we just have x times the square root of x squared minus 1. This right here is for tangent y. And with that, we are done. This answer is equal to that 1 over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. And some people will actually like to put the absolute value around this x, but it depends on the domain, depends on the definition of the inverse secant that you're talking about. But this is a pretty good uh, answer for it. Okay, now let's see how can we integrate inverse secant x. Hmm, what do you guys think? We actually have to use integration by parts. Because by now, hopefully you guys have done a lot of integrations with uh, inverse functions. Usually this is done with integration by parts, okay? Because we can differentiate this much better than integrating, right? And just hopefully differentiate this and then put things together and hopefully best. All right, now let's put this down in blue. I will of course use the di setup for you guys, d and i, and then let's have the plus minus on the side just to get ready. I'm not going to integrate secant inverse right here because otherwise I'm just doing the same question. I will integrate one because this is like one times the inverse secant, right? Just like that. I will differentiate this guy, secant inverse x. Now, get to work. Integrating 1, we get x. Differentiating inverse secant, we get that, <laughs> which is 1 over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. And now we are putting things together. Remember, the product of the diagonal with the sign right here, this right here is the first part of the answer. We have positive x times that, so this is x times inverse secant of x. And the product of each row, this is still an integral. And by the way, we didn't keep on going because you can see, if you keep on going to differentiate this, it's going to be scary. So I'm not going to do that. But the main thing is that 
In fact, we can integrate this part already. Now let me just put this down for you guys. This is still an integral when you multiply them. It's a minus integral though, minus integral. And when you multiply this and that, let me actually show you guys all the work. 1 over x square root of x squared minus 1 times x. And of course, instead of the integration, don't forget to put on a dx. And the nice thing with this is that x and x cancel out and 1 over square root of x squared minus 1. We can actually integrate that. But how? Oh my god, this is a lot of trick being involved, okay? We will have to do some trick substitution for this one. So, hmm, let's see. What can we do? Something squared minus 1. So I will just say, let x equal to which function shall we use? It's a secant or tangent. And the answer to that is secant. Yes, I know. It's again secant. But uh, I cannot use x, of course not. I will have to use theta. And the idea is that secant squared minus 1 gives you tangent. And you could have done the same right here already, but you know, I try to avoid the identity. Because joint triangle, this is actually a better method. Because you can figure things out rather than just memorizing. Anyway, take x equal to secant theta and do the usual business. Differentiate both sides. And I will put this down right here so I can save some space. dx, actually no, I will just still put it down right here as usual. dx is equal to the derivative secant theta is secant theta tangent theta d theta. And let's just focus on this integral, okay? So the integral of 1 over square root. Now we have x squared, x is secant theta, so it's secant squared theta. And then we have this minus 1, okay? And then we multiply by dx, which is this part. And let me just write this down. This is secant theta tangent theta d theta. Let's focus on this integral first. Now, the beauty of all this is that secant squared theta minus 1 is tangent squared. So on the bottom, we have square root of tangent squared theta. And when you're doing the integration, seriously, don't mind the absolute value too much, especially when you don't have numbers right here. So you will just cancel the square and the square root, and that's tangent theta. Uh, we'll try to avoid absolute value, okay? And if you want to see how to integrate absolute value, you can check out the video in the description. But anyway, this tangent theta is in the denominator, and we are multiplying with this tangent theta, so this and that cancel each other out. In another word, we are saying this is the integral of just secant theta d theta. Of course, this right here is something that you should know, and if you don't, uh, you can check out my video. I showed you guys four ways on how to integrate this guy. The answer to this is secant theta L, oh, sorry. The, the answer to this is ln of absolute value. Now when you do the answer for this, it's <laughs> absolute value. Secant theta plus tangent theta. Don't put on the plus C yet because we're not done. Because that was the original integral. This is just a uh, small appetizer. Anyway, uh, you draw the triangle again, but it's pretty much the same kind of triangle right here. So the idea is that if you look at this picture, if you look at this, uh, equation, you can draw the picture. I will just put this down. Theta is here, and you put down x over 1, and this is still the same as that, square root of x squared minus 1. So that's the beauty of all these kind of things. Anyway, this right here is ln absolute value. Secant theta is, of course, just x, or x over 1, you can look at that picture. And then plus, tangent theta is this over that, which is square root of x squared minus 1, like that. Okay, so this is just for this part. So finally, I will write down the answer legitimately. The integral of inverse secant x dx, this is equal to, this is the first part of the answer, x times the inverse secant of x, and then minus, this right here was the answer for that part. So we will have the ln absolute value x. And in fact, do I need to have the absolute value? Yes, we do. No, we don't. Yes, we do. 
because this right here is still smaller than that. If x is negative, uh, the inside might be negative, so we do. <laughs> anyway, x plus square root of x squared minus 1. Once again, this right here is smaller than x. If x is negative, this is not going to be bigger than that to you know, overcome that, so the inside here might still be negative. But anyway, in the end, you put down the plus c. This right here is the answer for the integral of the inverse secant x. Hopefully, you guys all like this.